Hello, today we are here with John Reidner. Uh, he is a, a librarian. Uh, his title is Technical Processing Web and GIS Specialist at the UC Berkeley Earth Sciences and Math Library. He'll be giving us an initial tour of his collection and then we're going to talk about cataloging. So, John, if you want to lead our way, we'll uh, follow you. Okay. Welcome to the Earth Sciences and Math Library at UC Berkeley. Um, this is sort of the entryway, it's kind of a hallway, the uh, circulation and reference desk here. Um, the library has over half a million uh, maps and air photos and about 300,000 uh, volumes, both here and in storage in Richmond, California. So all along here are, are double folios. These are the oversized um, atlases. They're kind of fun to work with. Here's one of my favorites. The USGS Atlas of Transmission Pipelines for Natural Gas. Giant, triple folio. Triple folio is defined by uh, the its inches. The in centimeters. Height of the spine. Right, and so when I'm cataloging atlases, that's something I need to take in to consideration is how high um, of a shelf does the item need to go on. So you can see we have our double folios down here that lay horizontal um, on rollers, which isn't the best for the material because it compacts over time. And then we have triple folios here, and our single folio atlases are still further this way. In this dark uh, aisle of the library is about a third of our um, Alice collection. I'm standing right next to the um, Asian, East Asian um, atlases for China. We have a great collection of um, East Asia and Pacific Islands in this collection, both maps and atlases. And these are the single folio atlases, the most common size for atlases. So here we have the Geological Atlas of China. Um, if I uh, were cataloging this, some of the access points I would think about are the title, um, the author, or the uh, publisher, if, depending on who has primary responsibility for it. I, I wouldn't get that information from the cover necessarily. Um, atlases are easy compared to maps because they have a title page like a book. Um, and oftentimes the person or entity responsible is a lot easier to see. Um, pretty clearly. So obviously the title, Geological Atlas of China. Um, it's pretty clear that the compilation committee of the Geological Atlas of China has main responsibility, so I would add that as the author. And then I would have additional authors, uh, compiler, executive associate compilers, and um, I would add the translator in a different field. Geological Publishing House is the publisher, Beijing is the location. And then this is probably a little too far afield to be mentioned in the record, but I, st I would still need to find a date somewhere. It doesn't look like there's one printed on the title page or on the verso. Um, you can ignore the fact that it's already been cataloged. <laughs> um, I can see here that the one of the the forward is dated 1996. But then subsequently the preface is May 2001, so 2001 would be a good place to start. I'd probably want to read a little bit of the introduction to find out if there was anything about a date. Uh, oh, here, look, at the end, May 2002. So that's the latest date that's in the front matter of the atlas. So I'd probably go with 2002, which, if we look at the label, I would be right according to the way this was cataloged. Um, some of the other things I would want to note are the number of pages. If, there, if the pages are numbered. So, oh, there's very distinct page numbers there at the top corner. So I want to look for that. And I want to see, I'd want to check to make sure um, the maps are either at the same scale or a different scale. So here's one to five million. Let's look at another map. Here's another map. One to five, or uh, one to one million five hundred thousand. So right there I see that there are different scales um, of the map, and so that would mean that scales differ in the uh, bibliographic record. That's, I would actually put that in the, in the So you do include the scales 
for uh, your bibliographic record um, for all your mapping material? Yeah, there needs to be a statement about the scale, whether uh, no scale given or I can, I have a uh, scale calculator that I can use if there's a scale statement on a single sheet map. Um, I can calculate what the scale is based on uh, either a graphic scale, sometimes it'll st uh, state it as a representative fraction, which is what's necessary for the bib record, or else um, I can also say uh, scales differ or scale varies, which would mean that the scale, there's different scales on the same map, which is actually much more rare than a lot of the records in OCLC would lead you to believe. Um, the other thing I want to make sure to note for this record is the height of the spine. I would need to measure it to put it in the bib record, but also to know where to put it on the shelf here in this library because there are at least four different shelving locations based on the size. So here we are getting into another portion of the library. Yeah, and this is the uh, map side of the library. We, the way our building is laid out, it's kind of segregated that way. Um, we have mostly physical geography maps, um, like we do our book collection. We have a nearly complete uh, historic set, historical set of um, topographic maps of California from the USGS, both the seven and a half minute and 15 minutes. Um, the maps that you're looking at now are the map cases for the Western US uh, topo quads. We segregate our uh, topo quads a little differently than the rest of the collection. They all have the same call number, but are shelved alphabetically by um, state, whether east or west, and um, then alphabetically by quad name, uh, rather than geographically. Um, John, now I, uh, hypothetically, um, I came in here and I wanted to uh, find out about um, uh, urban sprawl in Alameda County, and I would like to see some aerial photography of that, um, and maybe a topographic map. Um, okay. Could you help me find that? Absolutely. So. Um, First thing you would need to do is get to where the California topo maps are, and they're right here. Uh, the next thing you need to do is come over here and look at this index map of the state of California and find out what the quad name is for the area that you're looking for. So if we are looking for Alameda County, that's a pretty big area. Let's take a look, for instance, at the Oakland West um, topo quad, and they're alphabetical by topo name, or by quad name, sorry. So, conveniently enough, this one's labeled Oakland. And we'll open the drawer and set the break. Open up the top. Oh, and here's Oakland right on top. Fantastic. Okay. So, the way we have arranged our maps is the most recent is on top. Um, it looks like someone probably checked out the most recent map because this one's 1980. I know that we have them into the 90s. but pull this one out. So that's 1980. And then here we have 19, uh, still photo revised in 1980. Here's photo revised in 1973. Let's see. Oh, here's one. This is a special series the USGS put out of air photos. Ortho quarter quads. So we can compare that. That'll be interesting. So I see. I see the similarities. Here's um, this must be what it's at. Maybe 580. 580. Mm -hmm. The 580 running right. through here. Right. So you can see the similarity landmarks. Right. And you can notice too that, um, for instance, you know it looks it looks pretty simple with just the streets here. But then if you look at this with all the um, the building outlines um, that you can see and all the, the trees and uh, vegetation, it's a little more complex than just a dot. Okay, so yeah, go ahead okay. and narrate what we're looking at here. Okay, so this is the uh, record on OCLC, which is the shared cataloging system uh, that UC Berkeley participates in for our California topo quads. And I just noticed that um, Library of Congress recently separated out the genre form headings, which is this delimiter V maps topographic. So they split it out uh, into a new genre form heading, and so I need to change that. So right now it's gray because it's a controlled heading, which means supposedly if that field changes in um, 
LC, it'll change in our record, but that hasn't happened yet. Um, but since I'm, in it, I'm working with this record, I'm going to change it myself. So I need to uncontrol the field. Now I can change it, and I know that the new heading is just maps, and I know that the new genre form entry goes in a 655, second indicator 0, topographic, oops, topographic maps, so more like English. Um, and now I'm going to control all the other headings at once, and those are two valid headings, so all headings were controlled. Okay, so this is OCLC Connection. Um, by policy, uh, here at Berkeley, we have to do all of our cataloging in OCLC and then read it into our local system. Um, and we're looking at the bibliographic record in OCLC for uh, the California uh, topo quads and other topographic maps. You can see here at the top that uh, CUI is our holding symbol. We're the only library in the world that has attached our holdings to this record, probably because it's kind of a funny way to catalog it, but um, that's fine. So I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the fields here and what makes a map record a map record. Obviously the first one is you can see the work form is maps. That gives you a, di a whole different set of fixed fields and um, variable length fields that, you ne that need to be um, filled in a different way. One of the most important ones I think is, are the scale fields. So in the variable length here we have the 034 which is a machine readable uh, designation of scale and the bounding coordinates for all of the maps in this series and that um, pairs up with the 255 which in this case says scales vary because this is a um, record for four different um, topographic map series in the state of California. Seven and a half, 15 minute, 30 minute, and the one degree uh, quadrangles. So um, what but, sources do you use to determine these standards? So we um, do all of our cataloging based on AACR2, which is designated in this description fixed field here. A is AACR2. Um, and we do full level cataloging for our maps. Um, not every map library does that. And we catalog collaboratively on OCLC. Uh, for subjects, we use the Library of Congress subject headings uh, down here. and. Um, we do have some local call numbers, but all of our cataloging follows AACR2 and Library of Congress standards, uh, full level when we can when we can make those records. Uh, one of the other um, important, very important fields for maps is this index fix field, and this basically um, says whether or not an index for this map series exists. So if it's blank, it doesn't. If it's a one, it does. An index map is really important for uh, maps because if you look at a single sheet, you may not know where that is without looking at the index to find out where it is in relation to the others. Let's see. Um, 500 notes are extremely important in maps. Oftentimes, that's a great place to match uh, points when I'm cataloging looking for copy. Um, it's very important to note any special numbering systems or any kind of uh, unique identifiers that you wouldn't necessarily think of looking at in books, especially for uh, government printed maps, because uh, they can have different information that would lead to needing different records. Uh, you can see, the, oh, another important one is re how relief is depicted. That's important for maps. Uh, in this case, it's contours and spot heights, but there's any number of ways of uh, depicting relief and this 500, the relief uh, is related to this relief field, which is the numeric, oh, I'm sorry, alphabetic code. Uh, so this is uh, contours and spot heights are G.